Welcome to Bridge Atlantic's interviews, where we get to know the people behind and in front of the creative industries. We're your hosts, music web designer Ross Barber Smith from Scotland, owner of Electric Kiwi, where we create awesome custom websites for bands, artists, and musicians. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Electric Kiwi. Yes, and I'm singer songwriter and multi instrumentalist Marcy Novelli from Canada, a man who wears many hats, literally and figuratively. And speaking of hats, I guess I better put on my party hat because my birthday is this week on the 9th to be exact, which is uh, exciting. It's exciting, but. Um... <clears throat> How old are you going to be, Marcio? Um, I, I think I think you need to shut up now. <laughs> okay. So anyways, you know what would be an amazing present, everyone? If you all went over to my website, marcianovelli.com and pre-ordered my new acoustic EP, The Reimagining Volume 1, which officially comes out on March 31st. Uh, you can stay up to date on all things me by following my Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, which are all my name, Marcio Novelli. Simple. Easy. Yeah. Pretty simple. And uh, yeah, as you can see, Marcio and I are wearing our trusty Bridge Atlantic shirts. Uh, if you want a piece of, I want to say history, a but piece that of may us? be ambitious. You want a piece a of piece us, of, man? Sure, sure. <laughs> if you want a piece of us, then go over to eBay where you can buy uh, some of Marcio's used uh, <laughs> underwear. Uh, but <laughs> oh, I, was I don't know where you're going to go with that one. But, yeah, I, I was going to go one of two ways and I, I went that way. Um, I'm glad you went that way. I'm proud of you yeah, for going that thank, way. Thank I really you. am. And I mean that. Thank you. The other way was actually worse. But anyway, oh. <laughs> well, I, if you I want, want to pick up we'll one of our to the, shirts. To the, to the viewers and listeners' imagination then. <laughs> yeah, let, that's best. So if you want to pick up one of our shirts, uh, you can head over to our website, bridge-the-atlantic.com slash shop. Uh, there's a link in our show notes, so go and get your own. Yes, and you can use a coupon code if you're like cheap and want to save 10% off, like me. Would I would totally want to do that. So take that with a grain of salt when I call you cheap, because I'm cheap too. Um, it's just our little way, little way of saying, whittle, I, I just said whittle lay. It's our whittle yeah, lay of you've saying been thank hanging you. Hanging out with your kids too much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so do that. And uh, it, it helps us out. And you will be maybe as cool as we try to be wearing these badass shirts. So do it up. Well, speaking of cool, our guest this week is Benji Rogers, British-born, New York-based entrepreneur, technologist, musician, and the founder of Pledge Music. Uh, he's an early pioneer of the direct uh, artist-to-fan model of distributing music. He founded Pledge Music based on the belief that artists should share the process of their artistic output and not just the finished product. Yes, and in, in addition to his work with Pledge, Benji is also the co-founder of Dot Blockchain Music Project, an attempt to create a decentralized global registry of music rights using blockchain technology that will overhaul the com commercialization and movement of music online. He's also an instructor at Berklee College of Music on digital trends and strategies in the industry, and rumor has it, a Michael Bolton fan. I'm not that excited, but maybe Ross is excited about that part. But I am excited but, to have this fine, cool, awesome gentleman on the show. So welcome to the show, Benji. Awesome. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. And, it really is. Uh, so so are, you, are you having the Michael Bolton quote? Is that where you got that piece? I got that from your Facebook page. Yeah. Um, uh, which is from which movie? 10 points if you get it. Oh, I'm kind of disappointed this is from a movie. Uh, I honestly have no idea. I'm a Michael Bolton fan. From my money, it doesn't get any better than when that man sings when a man loves a woman. It's from Office Space. Oh. One of the greatest oh. Ah, uh, well, you know, we're learning something about you already. So let's learn a little bit more about you, Benji. Tell us three things about yourself that everyone should know. I'm a New York Rangers fan. I'm obsessed with exceptional coffee. Uh, and um, I would say that my top movies in the world, if you, not, in, not in order, would be Office Space, Annie Hall, Manhattan, Rushmore, Big Lebowski. And for six, I'll go Fletch. Wow. Ross and you might actually be soulmates. You're both from the UK and love coffee. We do. Yeah. And that was probably Match one of the most heaven. thorough uh, three things about yourself everyone should know. Mm -hmm. You clearly know yourself very well, Benji. Yeah, no kidding. There, there are actually yeah. a whole bunch of other stuff as well I could go with, but those were the three that kind of got, got into my mind. So, yeah. And <laughs> I like also, it. You, and also, whenever you're talking to someone from Canada, you have to mention the hockey, and that's how you kind of 
you get you get 10 points no matter what i know <laughs> I, i'm a terrible spokesperson for for canada because i don't like watch any sports but we'll, okay. we'll just we'll just we'll just pretend i do <laughs> we'll pretend i do uh benji's be, before we dive in i do want to say that i actually i absolutely love pledge music i actually uh did a campaign last march ross it was last march from upcoming oh, yeah. new full-length mm-hmm. album and we reached it in under three days Awesome. Um, yeah, which we I, I had planned for two months, <laughs> and uh, you know uh, I, I attribute a large part of it to the fact that it was you guys were just so easy to work with, and everything was just laid out right there. I'm really hands on, so having everything right in front of me, and being able to update everything and and get everything um, just set out the way I wanted it helped a lot. I think because as soon as it was launched, it was ready to go. It was it was there, and the staff. I, I'm still it's it's an ongoing campaign, and I've still yeah. been working with some people, and yeah, I, I'm very impressed. So that um, is my, I'm, that's my little, uh, what's it called? <laughs> thank you. Tip my glass to you. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, Actually, yeah. I shouldn't tip my glass. No, I, I tip my hat and I raise my glass. And raise my hat and tip my glass. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> and I appreciate it because a huge part of what we tried to build there was not just a tech platform, but the team and the team are just the most exceptional, um, you know, ladies and gentlemen I've mm-hmm. ever had the pleasure to work with. And the key to it is they take it personally. So they really, really do dig in. And you'll notice like if you write to them like something's wrong, it's it's it it's it's a it's a hard job because you feel it, right? Mm-hmm. And because they're artists and our job is to basically make it work. Like it was just get shit done yeah. and make it work. And so the, the the latitude that we give them is 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 quite wide because these the the things that come up late night, you know, musicians work weird hours and weird schedules and they mm-hmm. always just show up night after night day after day so uh it's um the technology is a huge piece of it but the humans behind the technology are what makes it work and well uh, and by the way I'm the glad w- you had that experience well the, the word is testimonial thank you ross for not mm-hmm. helping me out with that one i couldn't just think oh, of sorry, that word sorry. that was my testimonial no i i, I did <laughs> actually Great do testosterone. thank you very much yeah <laughs> <laughs> i did uh i well i did a, cram- a crowd camp not to go too far into this but i've done a crowd campaign before this one a few years ago, I'm not going to mention which platform or anything, but I wasn't, there was no human element. You know, there was no one to talk to. There was no, and this has just been a complete 180. I, I was going back and forth about actually which can, which platform to use. And Ross actually strongly suggested Pledge Music because of the artists that, uh, not to speak for you, Ross, but the artists you've worked with, mm-hmm. you said, had such a great experience using Pledge. And oh, yeah. Uh, everyone, so yeah, I went with everyone it. Everyone I, I know this used Pledge has talked very highly of it. Yeah. And um, mostly for the same reasons that you have mm-hmm. is that um, personal interaction. So yeah, it makes um, a big difference. Yeah, and and big difference. you know, it is, it's, you know, we, if you're an independent artist and you've been doing this for a while, you forget mm-hmm. that like, it's not a very natural thing to do um, unless you've done it before. Like, like when we launched our thousandth campaign, it finally became a little bit normal, but still every time I, I get a, um, uh, an RSS feed of all the launches and I keep saying like, how do these things keep launching? And we've seen thousands now, but the key is like, everyone who launches a campaign has that sense of an artist is putting themselves out there. Mm-hmm. And that's the, that's the point of art, right? Is to put ourselves out there. You know, I, I did it myself. I launched a campaign on my own one. And I, when I first hit that button and everyone that we hired, I said to them, there's a moment where you just, you, you get the chills, yeah. like, like when you go on stage it's and you're terrifying. not quite sure what's going to happen. <laughs> um, and putting yourself out there is a brave thing. And so what I always tell anyone who comes to work for the team, whoever he or, he or she is, I keep saying to them, like, just bear in mind, they're putting their hearts, their, 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 their hearts and their hopes out there. Take that seriously. And luckily they do, which is kind of the, the, the cool part about it. And, um, yeah. Um, and again, if it's going badly, we want to know why and we want to fix it. And that's right. really been the key. And the great part is, is they're self-starters. And I think when you're, whenever you're trying to consider a technology, the human part is the messy part. But ultimately, I feel it's the part that, that differentiates the great platforms and great tools from the others is like, Absolutely. something's not working and you get a phone call saying, this is how you fix it. Like mm-hmm. that's everything. And yeah. So we set out to do so. Thank you for your testosterone-filled testimony. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been. I've never been referred to as being testosterone-filled. So that is. A oh, first. It was. It was just in the search for the word. I thought you said testosterone, but oh. whatever. <laughs> Man, this interview is going off the rails fast. <laughs> so Benji, when you when you first started Pledge, um, yep. did you think it would play such a large part in like popularizing the direct to fan model that we see much more frequently now? And um, and also, why do you think it's a model that works? 
And do you yeah. think that we'll see that trend continue uh, more the direct to fan? Yeah. Rip. So, so when we first started it, it was a no brainer in my head, but then, so, you know, but in England, you know, the Northern line's a hundred years old and it should work and that should be a no brainer, but it doesn't, it's still broken. Right. You know, so like thing, you know, in, in my, in my mind, I was just, there was a problem I had specifically, which was I kept going into debt to make music and I had a bunch of fans who wanted to pay for music. And so my thought process was if all music is crowdfunded, if all music is funded by fans, what difference does it make when they pay for it? Like, you know, why is it better to buy it from iTunes than direct from me? Why is it better to buy it from a record store than from me? And that's a very hard one to reconcile early on because it was just how we'd done things for 60, 70, 80 years. So in my mind, what happened was um, about 10 to maybe 15, 17% of fans are want more. And the traditional music industry offers them nothing. So what we found was when we launched the, 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 the campaigns, the spend per fan was like 60 to 70 dollars or you know 50 pounds per purchase. And I was like, I thought it was going to be high, but not that high. And what that said was that the experience of someone doing something was more experience was more interesting to them than the end result. So um, what I think we're going to go towards in this new music economy that we're going for is where the closeness that is perceived or actual is going to be the differentiating factor in spend per fan. So what the music industry tends to do is say, we want to sell to the most amount of people possible, right? That, that's the goal. A streaming service, we need the most amount of subscribers, not the right ones, the most amount. So what you have to do is you have to vanilla, you have to kind of smooth out your product to make it appeal, appeal to the broadest base. Um, but what's interesting about music was, music was always a reaction to that. So if you were into the Sex Pistols early on, or you were into Bob Dylan or Neil Young, these weren't yet mass popular things. They were small and kind of weird and interesting and against the, the traditional grain that then became mainstream as it became more acceptable or more wanted. So what fans want, I think, is connection. We want to belong to that group. And I can't do that on a platform called Spotify, because if I listen to your music on Spotify, I'm one of hundreds of millions of people that they're trying to get through a funnel to pay fan, to pay the artists pennies on the stream. That's not a bad thing. But for the 15, 17 percent that want to pay more, why would you not let them? Like, isn't it kind of insane if someone said to you, hey, I'd like to pay you 0 0.005 per stream. So can I give you five cents or fifty five dollars? Which would you prefer? The answer is kind of obvious, right? <laughs> so as an artist, when you think to yourself, do I want this money or do I want less money? I think that, that, that it's a no brainer. But the really cool part about the direct to fan model is that you can get $55 average spend per fan and the 0 0.5 cents per stream. It's not either or, it's as well as, it's additive. Whereas before it was like, well, if they buy from pledges, they won't buy on iTunes. But the difference is who cares? If pledge is 15% and iTunes is 30, which one is better? But you know, the music industry has been so ingrained in this way of doing things um, uh, that it was just not normal. So to me, as we go into this future, um, uh, we're going to the way in which an artist interacts with those super fans is the absolute difference between them making it and not because the super fans will normalize that to everybody else 10 times better than a product with a shiny green logo will normalize that to other people. And it's worth more money in the long run because if you can get a hundred dollars a year from 15,000 fans, versus a dollar a year from 15,000 fans. One of those metrics is better for you as an independent and as a massive artist. So that won't go away. Um, and as I said before, fans don't need more ways to consume or buy music. They need reasons. And what better reason than I don't know what it's going to sound like. I don't know what the title is, but it's coming. And that's an exciting thing. So what Pledge did was it said, let's sell a virtual good that becomes a real good and the story is more interesting because in the end it'll wind up on Spotify, iTunes, Tidal, Rhapsody, you name it, whatever, anyway. 
why miss out on the income? And so that's my, my hope is that, that it becomes more and more normal. Um, but as uh, the great Stan Corrin said, when it comes to technological advancement, the music industry has finished just a, ahead of the Amish. So, um, you know, um, uh, which <laughs> I think true. is an insult to the Amish personally. <laughs> but, but, but that's really where it comes. It, it is like right. if one way makes you more money and gets you better data, surely that's better than the other way, which gets you less money and less data. Well, I can I can completely attest to this because I'm on the side where I'm very fortunate enough to have um, I hate to say the word fan or super fan, but people that, uh, I guess, believe in what I'm doing so much that they want to support it. And if, if I might put up, uh, say, my new EP for like five bucks, I've already had people generous enough to give $20 for it just because they want to support it, just because they want to be a part of that. And that means so much more to me than I than selling 10 times the amount yep. of albums. It's more important <laughs> to to nurture those people that actually care. You know, you're right. And as as I I say to people all the time, never confuse music being sold badly with people not wanting to buy music. You're just not offering it in the right way. If I read a great article on a website, how do I show how much I love it? Can I give money? No. Can I do I want to subscribe for nine bucks a month? I don't think so. I just want to I like that article. Let me do something. Let me show you know, and this is what it is, is it's expressions of of um, desire and of and of you know love and caring for, for that artist. And what the Internet's enabled is for that direct interaction to happen. Um, and, you know, you look at entrepreneurs like Ryan Leslie or, you know, who basically gets two million dollars per album cycle from 15,000 fans from his phone. Right from his cell phone because he does it through text messaging. So, or Escape X, another app that I who um, who I work with. You know that engagement and attention economy is huge, and if people want to pay, let them, but don't funnel them to the place where they can spend the least. Because if I if I'm if I want to support you on on Spotify or on Apple, what's the most I can do? What's my maximum dollar I can do on Spotify for you? Well, whatever. Nothing. That's it. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so what is the advantage to you? Mm-hmm. Because remember, you know, it's not that you don't want to be in the mass platform. It's, but where do you send them? And what I think artists are going to come to, to your point, Ross, is this, they're going to start to measure in business. We measure return on investment ROI. I think artists will start to measure return on attention. And what that means is if I, as an artist, send my fans to Facebook, What does that return me? If I send them to Spotify, what does that return to me? If I send them to a link, which allows them to buy my EP for three, for anywhere from $3 minimum to 20, that's going to return me the best return on my attention. So they'll think about where do I send these people and what does that bring back to me? Because remember, we've looked at it differently. We, We look at it as if I send people to Facebook, something will happen. But I think what we have to look at is, no, no, no. When I send them to Facebook, what does Facebook give me back? And the answer is, I pay Facebook to reach my own fans, and Facebook sells my fans advertising based on preferences that I get. Which Don't is get perfect. us started on that one. <laughs> Do so, not get so us it, started on that one. <laughs> yeah. So if we spin it backwards, though, if you've got an email list or a text message list or whatever it is that you choose, and you control that, even if you don't get the mass reach right of 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 the the complete platform it's the five ten thousand people that you want to reach that will then do the job for you because they're the ones that will post organically in their feed of things that they love so you need to use the platforms very skillfully but the key is to not be dependent upon them never build your house on someone else's land facebook unless you own a massive amount of stock basically belongs to mark zuckerberg and a bunch of billionaires there's nothing wrong with that except for if they cancel your account one day because they just decide to or because you do something wrong. Then try calling them up and saying, hey, can you put my account with all my followers back on? Sure, let me just get right on that. Hang on. (laughs) (laughs) And this isn't to bash Facebook. Their business model is to sell your fans ads. That's what they do. It's their only reason to be there, right? And as long as you know that and play within rules that favor you and your art, you're okay. If you, if you become subservient to that, you're in trouble. I, I just want to ask you really quickly, what do you think artists can do right now to build their audience and get their art out to people? 
right now, yep. today, after they listen to this and they, and they just get out there? Sure. So whenever you deliver music out there, there has to be a way for that fan or that listener to come back to you. And whether that's through a text messaging widget or through Noise Trade, which is a company that Pledge acquired um, last year, um, basically offer your music for free if you choose to, right? But in exchange for an email address, in exchange for a Facebook like or a Twitter or, or a Twitter ad, something that allows you to reconnect. And I always favor email because although people say email's dead, you know, SMS is the way forward. And it's I do dead. agree with that to a certain extent. You need email to log into government websites. To, to schools, to banks, you name it, right? And so that won't go away. So if you have the honor of your fan letting you into that inbox, that is a that's something to take very seriously. And the reason that we acquired Noise Trade was A, because of the phenomenal team, Cabin and Derek and Chris, who came over with them. But B, it was because Noise Trade basically built a business out of giving away music for free in exchange for an email address. And better than that, a large percentage of the fans who got the music for free also tipped around six and a half dollars. So again, don't stop people from spending if they choose to. Like it is honestly crazy. Go listen to my music on Spotify where you can't pay me any more money, where you can't give me your contact information and where I'm one of 35 million other songs competing for your attention in a multi-billion dollar corporation. Again, you do that as well. But where you send your core fans, the ones that you want yeah. to convert and come back to you, to Noise Trade, I look at Superphone, which is an SMS version of it, which is Ryan Leslie's app application. I would look at EscapeX, which is um, a great app for um, basically converting that social, uh, the social network ad side to something that favors you as the artist. Um, and then, uh, and this is the one that everyone forgets. When you play live in front of 15 people or 500 people or 5,000 people, they're in a room watching you. And every single person in that room should be your target to get on an email list of some kind in some way, shape, or form. And what I favor is walk to the back of the room and on the way out, shake everybody's hand and hand them a list. And the reason I like that the old school style of, of writing it down is the interaction becomes very real. When you hand it to them and they t and you take it back, oh, th is that did I spell that right? That little moment there means that forever you showed that fan that you cared enough about them actually getting on that list, and then that that night after the show, send it to something. In my band, and back in the day, we had a, a a deal that we had four clipboards. Each one, each member of the band had a name, had our names on it, and the person with the least number of email addresses at the end of the night had to settle the band's bar tab. And we were <laughs> total drunks. Me especially. I love that. So, so what it was was, you know, and you come off, and only <laughs> once did it ever go wrong, which is where I got off stage and I said to this very beautiful young lady, I was like, hey, do you want to sign my email list and she's like why you guys fucking sucked and i was like oh <laughs> like, but you were there the whole night oh, no. you're dancing i saw you <laughs> but um but yeah but so but so what you remember is is at the moment where you've got that attention what is your maximum return yes sell them a t-shirt yes get a cd or, or or some kind of merch in their hands but more importantly find have a way to tell them about the next show to tell them where your website is, to tell them if you're doing an interview. Because what happens is if you can personalize that connection, they never, ever forget it. And, and you remember that, like, although you may not be at the stage you want to be in your career today, that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. So, you know, I, I, I have an email list of three and a half thousand people from all of my touring and from all of this stuff. And tomorrow, if I emailed them all, a bunch of them probably old, old images now, but if I emailed them all, I guarantee you I could reach at least a thousand of them. Benji, are you ready for 20 questions? I am ready. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Meat or veggies? Veggies. Twitter or Facebook? Tw Facebook. <laughs> Talent or attitude? Talent. CD or vinyl? Vinyl. Indie or major? Indie. Yoga or yogurt? Can I say neither? <laughs> yeah, don't overthink okay. it. <laughs> In the case of yoga. <laughs> Mac yogurt. or PC? Mac. Hockey or football? 
please, hockey. <laughs> and I realize I put the same question in here twice. So um, <laughs> now I need to, on the spot, all, I need to think of a whole you. new question. I know. Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to spin this round. Pledge airplane, or music? <laughs> airplane, airplane or Rushmore? There we go. <laughs> okay. Airplane or Rushmore? To you? Airplane or Rushmore? Both I've never seen Airplane. either of them. Airplane very, very... is one of my favorites. It's one of the funniest movies okay. ever created. Homework so. tonight for you is Airplane or Rushmore. And I okay. want to tweet acknowledging that you've, okay. that you've participated. <laughs> Canada or Scotland? Okay. Canada. <gasps> wow. Star Shock Wars that. or Star Trek? Star Wars. Batman or Superman? Batman. London or Brooklyn? London. Education or experience? Experience. One of our most important questions, Michael Jackson or Michael Bolton? Michael Jackson. Celine Dion or Marilyn Manson? Manson. Yeah. Whale or Kale? Kale. Bette Midler or The Riddler? They rhyme, Benji. That's, that's, that's all. I have rhyme. no idea why, but The Riddler. <laughs> <laughs> And your final question, Ross or Marcio? Yep. I think, I think Ross wins today. Oh. <laughs> After that whole testimonial and everything, I still lose. I, I can't win. I just can't you, win. You've won, you've won before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I have won a couple times before. You're okay. You're, win, you're winning in general. Or yeah. I, I, I mean, you know, it's a close third place. <laughs> <laughs> wow wow okay so for artists who are considering using pledge to crowdfund a campaign yeah i've changed piece? my mind <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well can i take back a testimony i'm joking i'm joking what would be the biggest piece and just very quickly the uh, biggest piece of advice uh, you'd offer them um be honest um be honest about what you're trying to do and why and um don't uh, don't go in with the preconceived notion that it looks desperate or needy. Um, mm. Go into it with the mindset that you're going to offer them an experience that is better than they could ever have on streaming or on YouTube or on Facebook or whatever it is. And if you go into it with that, it will, it will come across and show up on the bottom line and you'll feel better about it. Now, as an entrepreneur in the music industry, you know, looking back, is there one thing that you know now that you wish you had known when you first started in order to uh, maybe it'll help someone else listening right now? There are a lot of things. Um, the one thing I would say is um, an entrepreneur, I, I advise a, a, a bunch of entrepreneurs, sort of mentor type thing. And they say to me, how do you handle the ups and downs? And a lot of musicians say, how do you handle the ups and downs? The Hold Steady have a wonderful line. We had some massive highs. We had some crushing lows, right? You know. And I said, what do you mean handle it? That's what it is. Understand that you are continuously on the edge of a cliff or you've thrown yourself off and you're building a plane in midair, right? You know, um, That's what it is. And it can be addictive and exhilarating. And it can be terrifying and, and, and it can really sink you to, a, to a, a crushing low. But the overall weight of, of the thing that you're creating or the thing you're trying to bring into the world will carry you through and have faith in your ability that right when you think you can't go any further, you can. Um, I've seen the most extraordinary women and men um, uh, face odds unlike anything I've ever seen and come through. So take the chance, um, but but recognize that you are going for a massive high, <laughs> and that com what comes along with that is going to be a crushing low. Of course. Um, and, and look yourself in the mirror and 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 say uh, you've got this. Where can people find you online, Benji? I know you're all over the place, but I should actually say, where's sure. the best place for people to connect with you online? Ironically, Twitter. Uh, uh, at Benji K. Rogers, B-E-N-J-I-K-R-O-G-E-R-S. Um, and the current project is the Dot Blockchain Music Project. So D-O-T-B-L-O-C-K-C-H-A-I-N Music Project. Go follow this guy, guys. Everybody. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, we'll put all those links in the show notes so that people can Even though he didn't pick me, even with though me. he picked Ross, I'll, I take, told I'll you, take that he you, picked you Canada. Were, but my third choice. <laughs> <laughs> And if you want to connect with us, as in the show, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, iTunes, and YouTube. Uh, just search British Atlantic and you will 
join us. Yes, and as for me, like I mentioned at the top of this interview, my new acoustic EP, The Reimagining Volume 1, is now available for pre-order. Um, I'm also working on my second solo album, and you can get them both, wait for it, at pledgemusic.com slash Marcinavelli. Another plug, jeez. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> make sure to follow me. Checks in the mail. <laughs> make, sure, make sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and even Spotify, even though uh, it's all under my name, Marcio Novelli. And say hi. I like to connect with everyone, and especially if you dig what I'm doing, I love you that much more. Yeah, and uh, I'm working on websites for various artists at the moment. You can check out my work and my blog at electrickiwi.co.uk. You'll find me on Twitter and Instagram as Electric Kiwi and Facebook Electric Kiwi Design. This episode was brought to you by Chris Keaton, Joe Centenary, Buck Naked Soap Company, 30 Roses, and Social Surge. All links are in the show notes, so please do check them out and see what they're all about because uh, they are keeping this show alive. They are indeed. And if you also want to help keep the show alive, visit bridge-the-atlantic.com slash sponsors or patreon.com slash bridge the Atlantic. Uh, you can support the show for as little as a dollar per episode. Yes, it's very little and it uh, goes a long way. It really helps us a lot. So, Benji Rogers. Good sir. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, it really was a, it was a pleasure up until I lost, but it was, uh, it was really great. We learned a lot. Uh, <laughs> it was, it's been a pleasure for me throughout. So. <laughs> I know, right? It actually got better for that. <laughs> no, but man, uh, yeah. you know, I'm feeling pumped. I'm feeling uh, that much more excited to just keep doing what I'm doing and to remember what matters most is making the music and the fans who actually, you know, want to support that's all that matters. Everything else is tertiary. You know, the rest is noise. That's the it. Rest is noise. Yeah. So come back sometime Thanks. soon. Love to. Thanks for having me. <laughs>